Coming up on Mountain News at 6, one flood victim will soon have a new home thanks to the Housing Development Alliance. What this means to her, coming up. Plus, the Letcher County Recreation Center is working towards getting back to normal after the flood. What could the timeline for construction look like? Plus, we're quiet for now, but shower chances return before the week is out. The latest coming up as Mountain News at 6 starts now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. Nearly six months following the historic flood that ravaged parts of the region, one Eastern Kentucky nonprofit has recently completed the first home in its flood relief project. WYMT's Alyssa Williams checked in with the organization and the new homeowner to learn more about what this means to them. Turning a hope into a home. And so if we can be any kind of little light, any kind of little hope for those folks in this community to help them get back on their feet, that's what we want to do. After months of building, the Housing Development Alliance has completed the first home within its flood relief project. This home will be going to flood survivor Sherry Mullins of Breathitt County. We had no power, we had no cell service, so we didn't know anything about anybody except, you know, the neighbors above us. I just stood and watched their house go down the creek and, and uh, just, you know, didn't, really didn't know what was going on. Mullins says when the National Guard came to rescue people in the area, she had nothing but her purse and the clothes on her back to take with her. It was like terror. And then I can't explain what happened. I, I felt nothing. I didn't feel heat. I didn't feel cold. I didn't feel happy, sad, afraid. I felt nothing. But now Mullins says she's feeling excited now that she's receiving a new home through HDA. So I just look around here and I think, well, I wonder what kind of furniture I can fit in here and, and, and that kind of thing. It's just excitement now, I guess, that I know it's really going to happen. Those with HDA say they will be continuing these efforts across the region, aiming to build 20 homes for flood survivors throughout the next year. You know, so many people feel like maybe things aren't going to get better, but this is a sign that they can get better providing a sense of hope and a sense of home to flood survivors. In Perry County, Alyssa Williams, WYMT Mountain News. Those with HDA say the home should be ready for Mullins to move into this spring. Mullins says when she does move in, she hopes to host a party to celebrate. Well, officials with the Foundation for Appalachian Kentucky say they received around 8,000 applications for aid after July's flood, and they say roughly 5,000 reported their home was either fully or partially destroyed. The Foundation CEO, Jerry Roll, says they recently held listening sessions and distributed surveys trying to find which areas of recovery need the most support. We had about 400 people show up to focus groups. We had 600 respond to surveys, and overwhelmingly, it's housing. People need a new home. People need their home repaired. People still need mucking and gutting. They still need mold remediation. Um, many, many people said HVAC. You can catch my conversation with Jerry Roll on issues and answers coming up tonight at 7 o'clock. The Letcher County Recreation Center has been a place for many activities since its opening in 2011. But after the flooding on July 28th, officials have been slowly working to get the facility back to what it was before. WIMT's Chandler Wilcox spoke with the rec center's director about the recovery process. It was almost six months ago when muddy water broke through the Letcher County Recreation Center doors and covered the first floor. The center reopened to the public earlier this month, but the first floor remains unfinished. You know, the downstairs, whether it was the bowling alley or the party rooms or the basketball courts, you know, that was probably half of the people that showed up here. 50% less consumer traffic not only makes the place less busy, but also has cut their revenue in half. We lost our, our wintertime um, youth basketball, uh, you know, that's we didn't get a host that this year, you know. Without a basketball court, there's only so much they are able to do because of dangerous spots in the floor. There's poles that are sticking up where the volleyball uh, used to go through, so we can't really do a whole bunch in here without having a safety hazard. A new court is not exactly easy to come by. Johnson says the number will likely be six digits long. 
I've never had to replace a basketball court. I can only imagine that it would cost a lot, and it is. It's going to be anywhere between $150,000 up to $250,000 just for the basketball court. Even though a timeline has not been set, people are eager to hear when everything could be finished. Every day there's somebody asking the same questions, you know, when, 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 and, you know, what's taking so long, and again, there's just so much bureaucracy, I guess, that goes on. Again, where we're a government building, it's not like we can just go find the first, you know, contractor to fix it. Johnston says the basketball court is a top priority when it comes to their next steps, but officials are hoping to finish everything as soon as possible. In Letcher County, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Center, the rec center is now open seven days a week. Well, we're quiet but cloudy in many re parts of the region right now as we slowly wait for that clearing line to push on through the region. We're in the 30s right now out in many spots throughout the region. There you see the front door camera here at WYMT. We continue to see plenty of cloudiness out there I and mean, you see our UVA wise camera a little different angle now as we watch things move through we're continuing to see those clouds pushing through even a little bit of uh, snow on some of the rooftops there temperatures remain in the middle and upper 30s few 40s that were sneaking into far southwestern parts of the viewing area continuing to push on out uh, as the sun sets there you see the clearing line continuing to scoot to the east out there this evening. And as we head through tonight, we'll have the details on the quiet weather for now, but when we could see a bit of a wintry mess, and eventually those temperatures back near average, break it all down in a few minutes. Steve? All right, Evan, thank you. Casey Bird was in court today in Laurel County. Bird is accused of killing London police officer Logan Medlock in October. Officers say Bird was drunk when he crashed his car into Medlock's cruiser. The judge scheduled another pretrial hearing for Bird on February 27th. He's in jail on a $1 million bond. Two people are facing charges in what police are calling an organized crime case in southern Kentucky. On Thursday, Monticello Police Department officers served a search warrant at a home on Branch Road. Officers say they found, quote, numerous stolen items. 47-year-old Stella Bates was arrested and charged with engaging in organized crime. On Friday, 26-year-old Donovan Justice was arrested on the same charge, plus receiving stolen property and possession of drug paraphernalia charges. Officials say more arrests are pending in the case. Two people are facing charges following a child's trip to the emergency room in Harlan County last week. On Thursday, an EMS crew brought a child from the Kenver community to Harlan ARH. Harlan County Sheriff Chris Brewer told us it appears the child had been malnourished, so deputies went with social services to do a home visit. When they arrived, they found and recovered suspected meth and other controlled substances. The couple, who were not identified because an underage child is involved in the case, is facing several charges, including several counts of possession of a controlled substance. Governor Andy Bashir's executive order on medical cannabis took effect at the turn of the new year. Now a group is pushing for legislative reform after noticing what they say is a concerning trend since arriving a few weeks ago. Lauren Bratcher with Kentucky Normal says approval to get medical cannabis should come from consulting your trusted primary care physician. But instead, some people have been getting medical cards or certificates specifically for cannabis at an exorbit exorbitant price. And they're saying we are gonna make you legal you pay us $200, $300, we're going to give you a certification, and that's going to make you legal in the state of Kentucky. A lot of these people are on disability. They have, you know, very strict budgets, and losing, getting, paying two or $300 to what they think is going to be a medical care expense and finding out it really doesn't do them any good, uh, that, that's, a, that's very, to me, very predatory, and I just, I don't think it's acceptable. Bratcher says the cost serves as another reason why her organization hopes medical cannabis will be legalized. She believes that regulating the drug will help Kentuckians to not only pay reasonable prices, but also get the product that's best for them. 
A luncheon in Pikeville today brought more than food to the table. It brought up a discussion about health care and how to move a county into a healthier tomorrow. WIMT's Buddy Forbes shares a taste of the Pike County Health Department's community health assessment. The Pike County Health Department is working on public health by bringing in the public. There was, uh, quite a bit of discussion, if I remember right, on tobacco. And this process will be a five-year journey, uh, it's actually titled Pike's Ride. Talking with community members who have a vested interest in the health and well-being of the area. We've actually had a community uh, survey that's been circulating throughout the county for several months. A program all about hearing from entities from all avenues, from education to government. It's amazing to look in the room and see, you know, local government, you know, education, health care, just a wide variety of organizations and, and thought leaders uh, having some say in where the focus will be for the next five years for Pike County and how we can improve our health outcomes. With topics ranging from cancer or diabetes to teen pregnancy or health impacts of unemployment. It might be obesity, it might be substance use disorder, but at least you'll have a plan, an improvement plan that the entire community can work towards over a five year period. I've had some communities that have tried to develop that as one of their goals. Public Health Director Tammy Riley says they are really trying to drive home exactly what the community needs most. So moving forward, um, you're not just running around chasing every you know public health concern, but you really focus in on those top priorities to see if you can move uh, move the uh, the dial, so to speak, and, and see some improvement. By bringing them along for the ride. In Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. The event was led by Dr. Angela Carmen, who teaches at the University of Kentucky. Riley says her help and perspective have been crucial in breaking down the plan for tomorrow. Eleven counties were in the COVID red zone as of Friday. In our coverage area, those counties include Elliott, Lawrence, Martin, Benefee, Morgan, Perry, Pike, and Rowan counties. As you can see, all the red counties here in eastern Kentucky. As of January 16th, the state's positivity rate is 10.37 percent. There's been 17,793 17, deaths statewide since the beginning of the pandemic. Well, coming up, sunshine in our immediate future, but we've got more showers ahead as well. I've got it all breaking down coming up next. Plus, a new business is coming to the Queen City. We take a look at when Gaddytown might be open for business. 